Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's me, Camaro with Dying to DIY. And for this video, I have six really cute farmhouse inspired DIYs to share with you all. So let's just get right to it. For this first project, I will be using two of these frames that are from Dollar Tree. I just start by removing the backing so that way it makes it easier for me to paint the frame. Um, and I did paint these around Easter time. I was gonna use them for an Easter video, but once I was done like sanding and distressing, I was like, oh, those are way too farmhousey and they were definitely not giving off a like an Easter vibe. So I saved them. And I also thought I saved the um, the film that I did of how I got this look and unfortunately I deleted it. So I am so, so sorry about that mom brain because I knew I was like, I have to save this so I can show them. And what did I do? I deleted it. So I am so sorry about that. Anyways, it's pretty self-explanatory. I went in with the Waverly white chalk paint. I did two all over coats of paint, really thick. And the material of this frame is like a plasticky material. So it's a little bit slipperier. The paint, it's harder for it to adhere to it. So when you do sand it, it comes off in bigger chunks like that. And that's where you can see like the black chunks and whatnot. So I just use a sandpaper to sand it down, kind of how I, you know, until I was happy with it. And then I just went in with the Brown Waverly Antique Wax like I've done in plenty of past videos. You guys can go back and look. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using the Antique Waverly Wax again in this video as well. So you'll see that later on. But I just took a chippy brush and then just distressed it how I liked it and that is how I achieved this look. So my next step was to work on the back of the frames and I decided to use this scrapbook paper that I bought at Michael's. I really like the faux wood look. I thought it was really cute added to the farmhouse look. So I just took a glue stick and added glue all over you know every square inch of the back and then I just laid that scrapbook paper on there and smoothed out all the bubbles and ripples. Let it dry for a little bit you know adhere itself to the backing and then I flipped it over took an exacto knife and just cut around the edge of the back just to trim off the excess scrapbook paper. So then I decided to use this um, peel and stick pre-cut vinyl that I bought at the Target dollar spot for $3. Comes with two little images in there. So each image is, you know, each decal is $1.50, which I thought is really reasonable. I wanted to do this for you guys to show you that even if you don't have a Cricut machine, you can still have, you know, really high-end looking um, project pieces using pre-cut vinyl that you find at Target or Michaels or wherever. You do have to have your own transfer tape, that's the only downfall of that, but I mean you can find that basically anywhere. Anyways, I just decided to do the welcome little vinyl sign first. I added that to the back and then I just placed the backing back into the frame. And this is how it looks so far. I do have one more little step, one more little thing I'm gonna add to this sign, but I wanted to work on the second sign for you guys. So I basically, I did this one the exact same way, except for I used the second little decal that came in that package and it says hello. So for this video, I thought it would be really fun to use the same base basically but do it in two different variations so with this project I'm using the same frame you know and the same scrapbook paper but the signs are different one says welcome one says hello but I just thought it would be really fun to show you guys two different variations using essentially the same products all right, so my last step for these signs was to just add some petite jute twine bows to each of these signs and I just glued them you know where I was happy with the placement of them. And here is how they turned out. I think they are so adorable, so pretty. Um, I just really like the more distressed look on these ones too. I like how the, you know, the chunks on the frame came off in bigger chunks to just add to that like more worn farmhouse look. And then I really like the added character that the bow gives each of these signs. I think they're so cute. All right, for my third and fourth projects, I will be using two of these placemats that I bought at Walmart for 97 cents. And then I will also be using these five gallon paint sticks. I ended up using eight sticks total because I'm gonna be making you know, two variations using the same placemat. So I just kind of messed around with where I wanted these sticks to go. Was I gonna leave the red on the placemat? Was I gonna cut the red off? I decided that I did not want the red on the placemat, so once I knew where I needed to make my cuts, I just marked everything and then I went over to my electric saw and made those cuts. 
So for this one, I decided that I was going to paint the frame using this white Waverly chalk paint. So I just started by covering all of those sticks with a good coat of that white paint. Once they were all covered, yep, you guessed it, I went in with this brown antique Waverly wax and I focused most of my distressing at the ends of each of the sticks. And honestly, this was just personal preference. I just kind of really liked the way that it was turning out. So most of the heavier distressing is at the ends of the sticks. And then I did like a lighter, a very light distressing in the middle of that. So once I was done working on the sticks, it was time to cut the placemat. And I just cut that according to my measurements for the outer frame. And then I just started by lining up each of those wood pieces to where I wanted them to go. And also I do want to mention that my original measurements didn't really take into account where the top and bottom pieces were going to be placed, I guess. I don't know what happened there, but the tops and bottom parts of the frame are kind of like 75% hanging off of the placemat. So when you're making your cuts, just make sure you kind of are aware of that so that doesn't happen to you as well. <laughs> So once I had each of the wood pieces into place, I just took my hot glue and just started by gluing everything down. I started with the middle sticks first, so that way I knew I could give myself a little bit of room at the top and the bottom <laughs> to add those top sticks. I just kind of wanted to get them into place. And then I ended up taking some jumbo craft sticks and hot gluing those to the back on the tops and the bottom parts just to give it some extra stability. And after that, to make sure it was really nice and sturdy, I took my stapler and I just added two slanted staples to each of the corners on this piece. I personally do not mind the stapled look on frames like this on the front. You guys can do it from the back, but just make sure you're using a shorter staple because as you can see here, I did it back to or front to back and I still had to hammer down the pieces of the staple in the back because it popped through the frame. So you don't want those popping through the front of the frame if you were to do it um, the opposite way that I did it. Also, just want to mention that for the second one that I'm about to make, I do add some sort of backing so that way you don't have to have the staples on the front. So I will show you that when I get to that. But for this last little step, I just added a saw tooth hanger and that was done. But before I show you the final look, I'm going to move on to the second variation. So for this one, I decided to stain the frame using a special walnut stain. And while I was giving those time to dry, I just started by cutting the placemat again using the same measurements that I did because obviously I cut the wood, you know, using those same measurements. So the same thing happened again where there wasn't really much room at the tops and the bottoms. But here in a second, I'll show you how I fixed that problem. After I glued these on, I just took this 11 by 17 inch canvas. It's a flat canvas from Dollar Tree and I just added it to the back and then I just used my stapler and started stapling that canvas piece to the back of the frame. And this way you don't have to have the staples on the front, you can do them on the back. And the staples were the perfect length this time. They did not come through at all. And also the canvas just made everything so nice and sturdy. I wish I would have done it to the white one, but I didn't really think of it until <laughs> I was all finished. So <laughs> anyways, my last step was just to add the sawtooth hanger to this one as well. And here is how they both turned out. So stinking cute. I love them. I just really love this placemat when I had first seen it. And I was like, you know, I definitely want to try to turn it into like a wall decor piece instead of, you know, being a placemat. Also wanted to show you guys a couple of variations. I know these are pretty common variations. You have the white with the, dis you know, the antique wax and then a stained frame. These are all very common, but by all means, if you guys want to paint your frame red, you want to leave some of the red on the placemat, go ahead and do that. I'm just here to give you ideas and nothing I do is set in stone, so please make it to fit your home decor. All right, on to our fifth and sixth projects. These ones are really cool, you guys, really fun. So I'm gonna be using three of these little, I guess, tabletop decor. They're thick wood pieces. These are from Dollar Tree. And for this first set, I just decided to, you know, paint mine using the white antique Waverly wax. Painted all three of those. I covered the tops really good. And as you can see, the whites are two different shades of white. So I just started by painting all of the sides of these pieces of wood just to make everything nice and cohesive. So once I was done painting them, I took one of them and started making measurements. I initially cut this in half 
but here in a second you'll see that I have to make another cut. So I just use my electric saw and I cut it directly in half, which is at nine inches. Each of these pieces are 18 inches long, so I cut it directly in half, which is nine inches. But after playing around with it and using this frame, because I am going to be using this frame here in a second to hang in the middle, I that is where I got my second um, measurements from. So I measured it again and I ended up cutting those pieces that I had originally cut at nine inches I cut them down to six inches long so learn from my mistake and cut two of the pieces at six inches long also learn from me and cut your wood first before you paint them because you still have to end up painting them again after you make your cuts so once I had them cut down to the correct size, I just started by gluing everything together. I used a mix of wood glue and E6000, and I'm basically making like a decorative ladder piece. So you have the two longer outer pieces and then the two pieces that we cut on the middle. So I just glued, you know, the ends of the smaller pieces and then I used my tape measure to line everything up to make sure um, everything was spaced out evenly. I glued the first little step ladder piece down at three and a half inches and the second one down at 12 and a half inches. And then once I had everything lined up, I used this picture frame band to keep everything nice and taut while the glue had time to dry, just to make sure everything was nice and straight. After I had let it dry for a couple of hours, I just took an 80 grit sandpaper and just started distressing it um, a little bit here and there. And then I also took some more of that antique Waverly wax just to add some more prominent distressed marks to this. Just here and there, wherever I saw fit basically. And then I just went back over it with the white Waverly if it got too dark or too heavy handed. I just did this until, you know, I was personally happy with the way that it looked. And this is what I've got going on so far. I did the front and the back of this piece. My next step was to take this little picture frame. I just started by removing the back little stand off of that and taking these fish eye hooks. They're self-starting fish eye hooks. I just measured where I needed them to be on the frame and then also on that little decorative ladder. And I just started, you know, screwing those in there. And they were kind of giving me a run for my money. So I just turned off the camera and did it off camera for you guys. I just didn't think you wanted to see my head in the way <laughs> and all that good stuff. So after they were all screwed in there, I just took some of my pliers and just opened the prong um, that was screwed into the ladder so I could hook the picture frame on there. And this is how that piece turned out. I am in love, you guys. It's so cute. It's just like a little decorative picture frame ladder I don't, I don't know what to call it but you know what I mean you get the idea um that's you know my cute little family and I on there that's the picture I chose to put honestly the only picture I have on hand that's like small enough to fit that frame so it just it was meant to be but seriously, this piece is so cute. I mean, you can definitely make it twice this big and add two picture frames. I think that would be super cute as well. All right, on to the last project. Same base, just different variations. So again, I'm gonna be using those wood pieces from Dollar Tree. And I started by making my cuts first this time. So I cut one of the longer pieces, well, one of the pieces, and they are 18 inches long. So I just cut it evenly into thirds. So they each come out to be six inches long. After that, I just took this chocolate color from Dixie Belle and I just painted each of those pieces all over um, using that chocolate color. Then I took some more of the brown antique Waverly wax and I just dry brushed it over those pieces just to add a little bit more depth and like character to them. This is what I have so far. And once I was done with all of those pieces, I just took the white Waverly chalk paint and just whitewashed it, dry brushed it over those pieces as well, and then kept going back in with some more of that antique Waverly wax and just did this until, you know, I was happy with the look. I was kind of trying to step out of my comfort zone a little bit with this look and just give you guys another color combination, just a different look than I normally do. And honestly, I'm really, really happy with the way that it came out. I'm digging it for sure. So I'm definitely gonna have to do it again here in the future. <laughs> so once I had each of the pieces painted to my liking, it was just time to glue everything together. Also want to point out that in the beginning, I was only painting two of the smaller pieces, but once I was like kind of laying everything out and gonna glue things together, it just didn't really look right. It wasn't 
that like ladder look wasn't coming to life so this piece definitely needs that third little step in the middle and which is why it worked out so well when I had cut them into six inch pieces because six times three is 18 and these wood pieces are 18 inches long so <laughs> sorry I guess you didn't know you were coming to math class today but anyways <laughs> So once I had all the measurements done and laid out and knew where I was going to glue everything, I just took the wood glue and the E6000 and just glued those middle pieces into place. And honestly, I'm sure the wood glue is good enough, but I was just being super extra. I just wanted to make sure that this was not going to come apart in the future. So I wanted to make that bond as strong as possible. So I was just trying to line everything up. I wanted the middle pieces to be spaced out evenly. So I glued the first step down at three inches, the second step down at eight inches, and the third step down at 13 inches. This allows everything to be evenly spaced and it looks really, really nice. Here you can see that I had to use um, some pieces of a jumbo craft stick to place on two of the pieces on the side right there. I guess when I had, you know, done my cuts or whatnot, the the measurements were a little wonky or whatnot so there was kind of just some spacing issues so I just needed like a spacer to kind of fill in that gap a little bit and it ended up working out really really nicely so I was happy about that so after that once I had you know each of the pieces glued where I needed them to be and in place I just took that picture frame band and just wrapped it around just so everything had a chance to kind of dry evenly and straight as possible while the glue was drying I just took the spackling from Dollar Tree just to fill in those gaps on the side and just to make everything nice and flush so that was super super easy once this piece had time to dry for a couple of hours I just removed that picture frame band and then I took some more of that chocolate color and the white Waverly and just filled in those spots where I had added the spackling just to blend those spots together and make it look like the rest of the ladder so while I was sitting there doing this, I was kind of looking over at these blue colors that I have from Dixie Belle and I just decided to go for it. So I took this vintage duck egg color and just kind of dry brushed it here and there, just added a little bit, you know, a little pop of color to this ladder and I love it so much. I think it is definitely what it needed. It just brought it to life a little bit more and honestly I don't use blue and stuff and like other colors a lot so like I said with this piece I was definitely trying to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and I really think that it worked out in my favor <laughs> so here is how that little ladder piece turned out how adorable is this you guys oh my goodness I honestly love it. I think it is such a cute little accent piece. You can wrap some like floral pieces around it. If you have like a vine type of thing, you can put this in your kitchen and hang dish towels on it, maybe in your bathroom and hang hand towels, or maybe even put it outside. There's definitely some options there for sure. All right, we have made it to the final walkthrough. Just gonna give you guys another quick look at the projects that I made in this video. You guys will definitely have to let me know which one is your favorite, which one stands out the most to you, which one are you excited to make because I cannot wait to hear. I really do love all of these projects. I mean, as always, it's just so hard to pick a favorite. If I had to choose, I really like this picture frame ladder one. It's super, super cute. It's just different. It's really, you know, out of the ordinary, which I really, really like different pieces like that. I also like the other ladder as well. I cannot wait to kind of stage it and see where I want to place it in my home. Also though, the little wall decor pieces with the um, roosters on them are totally, totally cute. Even the welcome and hello signs, like, like I said, I just, I can't pick a favorite. So you guys will <laughs> definitely have to let me know what you think down below. And before I go, I just want to, you know, show some appreciation to you guys. I really, really appreciate all the love and kindness that you show me. Thanks for being a part of this journey with me and, you know, just being so awesome. So thank you guys for being here and for watching. I'll see you next time.